not heterophobic. I have straight friends. They're not sexy and they're not nice. They're just like batshit crazy. Now I feel less insane. <laughs> Fun times with Beth. Oh, my face is in the shot this time. Hi, welcome to a new vlog. Nice to meet you. I carved a linoleum print last night when I couldn't sleep and uh, I did these test prints and discovered that I didn't like a few things so I have adjusted it to my liking now and I'm gonna do more test prints and see how I like the new version. So it's Friday today, Friday the 16th I believe. And I haven't vlogged for a few days because I didn't feel like it. I took a little break. In the last vlog, I cut out a clip where I said that I had been, that I started reading The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Joins. <sighs> the Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. And I finished it on Wednesday. And with that, I am actually done with all of the prompts for Gothtober. Unless you count the vampire movie. But for, to me, that's to my mind, this is a readathon, so the movie prompt is more of a like extra thing for me personally. Because uh, I'm not very good at watching movies. I get really restless and I want to like be drawing or something at the same time so I don't pay proper attention. And then I miss things. But I enjoy watching movies when I'm like <laughs> uh, socially pressured into paying attention. So I watch movies with my boyfriend. He's a lot better than me at doing one thing at a time. Um, anyway, he and I actually watched the uh, first Christopher Lee Dracula from like 1958 or something. It's really old. Or 62 maybe, I don't know. So that was fun. It would also be fun if I could get into this this paint. But yeah, let me tell you about the bone houses because I really really enjoyed it. I I actually cared about a fictional straight couple, which is at this point in my life, something I don't do a lot. I obviously care about the straight people in my real life. Hello, my friends, I love you. Please don't be mad at me. I'm not heterophobic, I have straight friends. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for a young adult to be able to give me a straight romance that I care about, that is quite a feat. Because I have hated those since I was a tiny child. So, the bone houses are essentially zombies, and we follow this young girl who works as a grave digger, and well, she's trying to lift the curse essentially, and with her she has a boy who is a map maker, and like, isn't that the most? romantic fantasy job you've ever heard of like it sucks that they're like 16 and have jobs in this fantasy world but also map maker ex grave digger i don't know if any of you were in the in a kind of fanfic community that had the trope of tattoo artist and flower shop couple but i feel like map maker and grave digger has great potential to be a beautiful fan fiction trope so if you're watching this and you're writing fan fiction maybe consider consider map maker and grave digger but yeah so the main character i really really loved her she is a young girl who has had to grow up way too fast she loves her axe and she's very kind of she's funny she's very funny 
So she's kind of like a strong female character, but not in a one-dimensional way, in my opinion. She's a whole, full, complex character. And I really, really enjoyed her. What else can I say about it? Um, it was just a fun, fun times with Beth. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So if that sounds like something you would be into, then I highly recommend checking it out. Because I thought it was great. So for the prompts, I needed that for bones. Um, I mean, I didn't. I had. I had the Halloween tree, obviously. I actually have three whole books left on my TBR, and I filled all the prompts. But also, half the month is ahead of us, so I'll get to them. I'll get to them. I just need to have an audiobook going, and when I'm like having tired days, which I have had a bunch of this week, I just like to lie down and listen to an audiobook. So that was Bones, and it also got me a second disability representation, which, uh, which was a fun, a fun extra because I feel like it's not super common to come across disabled characters, and uh, I really loved how that was done in it as well. Uh, there was like a couple of sentences that felt kind of like teachable moments, like I talked about with Cemetery Boys. Uh, but it was just a couple of sentences, just the one time, so it didn't like bring down my reading experience too much. And also, I want to say about the bone houses that the romance was super well paced and just nicely executed. There were a couple of sentences that sounded a little cliche to me or just very like typical I don't know again it brought my mind to fanfic but that's not really a bad thing it was just I recognize this place kind of thing I don't know I actually haven't been super into reading romance recently but I enjoyed the romance aspect of this quite a lot Kind of better. Where's... Hmm. I also started a new book uh, on audio. Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. So what I had been told about this book beforehand was that it's weird and it's a weird mysterious school where the students aren't allowed to leave for three years or talk to anyone outside. So it sounds kind of like a cult. I have a little more than an hour left and I feel like the ending is really gonna make or break the book for me. But I have been enjoying it so far so I think it's gonna be an overall positive for me personally. Um, so that would also give me another Dark Academia, which is fun. Another reason I took a break from vlogging was that I needed to catch up on studying. And just sitting in front of the computer isn't very vloggable. But I'm really enjoying the class I'm taking. Um, it's 3D modeling and animation in Blender. And... It's just really cool and fun.
Hello! It's Saturday. I'm trying a new vlogging strategy where I try to be more efficient with what I film and how I film it. So, I want to do some Halloween crafts. I just wanted to show my face because I feel like that's polite. So hi. I, I painted that and yes, I have it hanging in my own kitchen. Maybe that's a bit... You know? I don't know, but... I need storage and it's storage, so... Anyway, let's do some crafts and talk about Catherine House. So, I have these DIY things from Flying Tiger, and I'm definitely most excited about the coffin right now. So I'm gonna start with that. So these are both, um, what's it called? Tea light holders. And this coffin, it's a bit unclear what they suggest you do with it. I think I'm gonna keep mechanical pencil refills in mine. It comes with <laughs> these little paints that I don't think I want to use. But this, look at this tiny little brush, it's so, so tiny. So I have my own acrylic paints instead. So, it's not the best to use a paper plate as a palette, because it's kind of wasteful, but my porcelain palette that I would normally use, because that's easiest to get acrylic paint off of compared to plastic palettes, because acrylic is plastic, it sticks really well <laughs> to, to other plastic. Anyway, my ceramic palette has uh, big globs of gouache paint on it that I can reuse, because gouache is re-wettable with water. So I don't want to wash off that paint. So, I don't know, I feel like it's a bit of a, what's it called? You know, when it's like plus one, minus one, so it's like, yeah, some zero. So, I finished Catherine House last night while I was working on an a small oil painting, which I may or may not, may not have shown you. And I've been trying to think since then how to talk about it. So, um, someone said in a video, I sadly don't remember who, someone who read it said that, no, I think it was Emma Tobias again. I think it was Emma Tobias who said that Catherine House is unlikable characters that don't really do much. Which is true, but from that I assumed that there wouldn't be much of a plot, or that the plot would be very unsatisfying. So I, I went in with the expectation that there would almost be no plot, essentially, and there was more plot than that. So. Also, I'm not sure how I would des describe the genre of this book, other than dark academia. It also has that thing that I love, where it's like our contemporary real world, but there's an um, unrealistic element, which in this case is science-related, so maybe light science fiction or something. I would simply say that it's dark academia, that it's contemporary, almost literary fiction with a hint of sci-fi, is probably what I would say. Because I feel like literary fiction is usually used about books that don't have much of a plot and is more about the journey, which I definitely got the vibe from this book even though the plot and the mystery in it is actually like really kind of intense and interesting. 
but that's not where the main focus is. Which is kind of strange, but I think it worked. If I were to use other books to describe it, I would say on a dark academia scale, I would place it somewhere between somewhere between Ninth House and The Secret History because I feel like it falls in between those two when it comes to um, the narrative structure and like the plot payoff because I feel like The Secret History uh, and the way that ends leans more towards the no plot literary fiction kind of aesthetic whereas Ninth House has a very has a more uh, traditional action driven plot that does get a really satisfying in my opinion payoff at the end with like plot twists and everything i i really love ninth house if you didn't know how did i feel about catherine house well it's weird because I feel like it's a book that you either love or hate, but I don't love or hate it, so I'm just left feeling kind of, huh? I enjoyed it. It was a, it was a good reading experience, but I didn't like love love it. I gave it a solid four stars, if that tells you anything. And now, after I. I'm just not sure how to go on. And that's also weird because I usually get book hangovers when I really loved a book or when I really hated a book. So it's strange, like I don't want to read another book that's similar to it, but I'm also not in the mood to go in like the opposite direction and read something fluffy. So I'm just not sure what to read. There's going to be a live read-in tonight with Hannah and Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. So for that I'm going to take one of the physical books from my original TBR. But I always like to have an audiobook going and I haven't been able to, to pick one. Also about Catherine House, I was pleasantly surprised to find that our main character is bisexual and it's very like casually handled it's not a it's not a thing of the plot at all it just is she's not a super likable character but i did like her like you you get why she does what she's doing even if it's really dumb there's not much to do when all i can is thinking about you not doing well don't know where you are cause you're not here it's been way too long if i could lay down beside you i would i would when nothing really matters that's all i want to and now i'm gonna get started on the pumpkin lantern because lantern is probably the word I was looking for. Because I do have a plan for the colors for this one that I think is gonna look really cute. So I have an orange lantern that you may have seen in another vlog. So I'm gonna make this one purple and this light purple and then probably use some Posca paint pens in like the dark purple and maybe maybe some blue because those are complementary colors to orange so it's gonna look cute together. There's not much to do when all I can is thinking about you not doing well don't know where you are Cause you're not here It's been way too long If I could lay down beside you I would, I would When nothing really matters That's all I want to do 
Okay, I'm gonna draw on this and then we're gonna call it done for today and I will finish these two when I finish another book to talk about. Right there on top of the moon, we could sit and do nothing. I wish we were both to just fly away. I don't wanna care. It's being I'm good alone. I'll be okay, miss you like an old friend. Too scared now, thinking I should call up. This is where I'm at right now with the old painting I started last night. I'm gonna keep working on it now, but I can't film because I'm out of battery. I also need to pick a book to listen to while I paint. Okay, so I'm at a point with this where I just like needed to be done. So this is what I managed to do this time. I have a few more of these small canvases that they have magnets on the back. And I want to do some more like intimacy themed paintings on them because I think that would be cute to put on a fridge, maybe. So I've just taken a photo of this for Instagram. And I still haven't chosen a book, so that's the end of the update. Okay, bye! Hi! So it's half an hour until the read-in, and I'm just chilling. Here are my, my pumpkin duo. I think they look pretty cute. And uh, I've been doodling out uh, an apple pie recipe because one of these days I'm gonna bake. I bought apples today. And I've been listening to the live discussion about Catherine House on Books and Lala's channel, because uh, she had it as uh, the pick for her book club, the Literally Dead book club. And after hearing these three uh, very smart book people talk about it, I, um, I I like it more. Like I already did like it, but it was <laughs> nice to hear other people talk about it because now I feel less insane. <laughs> it's nice to not be alone with it. Um, so I'm gonna link that below, I guess, um, if you are interested. I also decided that once the reading starts. I'm gonna read Burial Rites and let me show you because I love this. It has a map in it. Viceland. Isn't that cool? Okay. I will see you in a bit, maybe. Welcome back to the kitchen. We are going to finish painting my Halloween crafts and talk about burial rites. Let's pour some paint. So, burial rites. I've put that on my TBR like five years ago or something, because I have this interest in reading about women who do murder, essentially. And um, it was recommended to me by someone. And reading it, it dawned on me why I have that interest. 
and I think it's my anxiety about just being a woman that comes out to play. There's just something to reading about like women who do bad things that feels really cathartic to sort of the, you know, with womanhood you're supposed to be certain ways, but there's also always something wrong with it. Like I'm thinking about sexuality and objectification, partly because of the WAP discourse and partly because I've been on Twitter a lot and people say milkers about breasts and it makes me want to absolutely die. So like you're supposed to be sexy and enjoy sex and that stuff. But if you enjoy it too much, then you're a slut and you're just objectified and you can't be taken seriously. But if you don't, you're boring and also can't be taken seriously. You know? So reading about women who just like, they're not sexy and they're not nice. They're just like batshit crazy. It just feels, I don't know. It's just like weirdly comforting in a way, I guess. And this book helped me sort of figure that out, which I feel stupid. It shouldn't have been, have been that hard to figure out, but for some reason I hadn't thought of it. So yeah. And just to be clear, I don't endorse murder in real life. I think killing people is bad, but I think reading about something doesn't isn't an endorsement of it in real life. <laughs> so Burial Rites, it takes place on Iceland uh, in the 1800s and we follow this one woman who is accused of murdering two men and so we start, it's, it's one of those uh, narrative structures that like we start right out the gate, we know a murder has happened and then throughout the book we slowly unpeel the layers to what really happened and um, maybe I'm easy to please but I always fucking love that because it always just hooks me right away. Like you can say, so a man has been killed and I'm like, oh my god, no, really? Uh, and, uh, and I just want to find out what happened. So she's been sentenced to be executed. And the book is partly flashbacks to sort of the lead up and then the murders and partly her waiting to be executed she's um has to stay with a family so we sort of get to know that family as well and a priest has to visit her to uh, give her spiritual guidance and he was a really sweet character i gave it four stars by the way and the book really does explore sort of expectations on women and womanhood uh, through this this main character but also through the women that she's staying with and the woman who is also implicated in the murder who's a much younger girl I'm not sure what else to say about it it's very it's also very beautifully written, it's very atmospheric and just beautiful Iceland scenery, beautiful but harsh as Iceland is. There's also a lot about like religion, because um, that was an important part of, of life on Iceland in the 1800s. 
I will assume. Because in the afterword, the author writes that um, the book is heavily based on research she has done because it's actually based on a true story, which I didn't know going in, so I thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, so this woman was apparently the last person in Icelandic history to be executed. up this vlog now with a few things, so don't go. First of all, I I finished the little coffin. I drew a spider in it that you can see through the through the window. And I also drew a little skull in it. Which I think is cute. So I'm I like it. And um, I also wanted to sort of wrap up which Gothtober prompts I did, or rather, because I thought it would be fun to write down in the prompt every book I read that fit that prompt, uh, as until I ran out of room. So I have a lot for foreign country female protagonist and BIPOC author, and then a couple for a few of them. Um, but yeah, um, so I thought we could go through that for fun seeds. The rest of this activity book, by the way, I, I still don't know what this is, which I guess I'm just stupid. And the crossword was too difficult for me. I got a few of them. But, I don't know. But I really loved having it, and I might still do more with it. But I'm not sure if I'm going to make another Gothtober vlog video. Uh, partly because of the other thing I want to talk to you about, which is the Revolution Festival. Which is this weekend, the 23rd through 25th. And it's an online event that my British comrades in Socialist Appeal are putting on. And the great upside to it being online is that we can participate from wherever. So I'm going to be watching that and that's going to be my, my entire weekend. And if you are at all interested in fighting oppression and changing the world for the better, I definitely think you should also check it out and see and what talks we're having, and listen to the discussions, and see what Marxists have to say about a variety of topics. So there's going to be sessions about art and revolution, about the US election, about the situation in Britain, about the history of colonialism, the Congo of Africa, about how to fight racism, about police and the state, um, 
the rise of China, communist or capitalist, and a whole bunch more essential workers and workers' control. So there's going to be a lot to learn and a lot of interesting discussions. Also degrowth as a way to combat climate change is going to be discussed. So there's just going to be a whole bunch of stuff. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, see if you can attend any of the sessions at all and see if it sounds interesting to you. Because I really do believe that Marxism has the ideas that will help us actually solve all of these problems that we are facing as humanity. I want to bring you with me if you are interested. It does give me a, a sense of hope for the future and just faith in humanity and I'm, I'm uh, convinced that we can create a better world and people can be better and we can achieve uh, an equal and just society where we can you know live in peace and have no homelessness and no starvation and no unnecessary deaths from preventable diseases and so on. Now for my my October prompts. So for bones, I only have the bone houses. For female protagonists, I have the yellow wallpaper, the Icarus girl, the bone houses, and Ron. Dark academia, the magicians, and Catherine's. Oldest purchased, the Icarus girl. Foreign country, the magician, the yellow wallpaper, Battle of Black Tom, the Icarus girl. For some of these, it's just the ones I read first. <laughs> uh, modern retelling, the Battle of Black Tom. I would argue, though, that Catherine House could be said to be a modern retelling of Frankenstein. Very retold, but. You could make an argument for that. It wouldn't be completely crazy, unlike the book. For red on the cover, I have the Icarus Girl and Cemetery Boys. For grey morality, I have the Magicians, the Bell of Black Tom, and the Burial Rites. For lies, I have Run. I don't think I mentioned that, but it did end up having a lie as a big part of the plot, so I put that down for lies. I didn't end up using the yellow wallpaper for it because I, I didn't feel like it worked well enough for me to be able to bring myself to do it, even though I said I would. For undead character, I have Cemetery Boys and the Bone Houses. For LGBT representation, I have Cemetery Boys, Run, and Catherine House. For disability representation, I have The Bone Houses and Run. For BIPOC author, I have The Acres Girl, Battle of Black Tom, Cemetery Boys, and Catherine House. As far as I know. And I don't have Vampire Film. Please forgive me. So it's Monday today and I didn't talk talk to you yesterday because I had a bit of a sad Sunday. And because I was sad, I made this apple pie. I was gonna film making this pie. I even did like I I drew out the recipe and I was gonna be like a proper cozy vlogger but then I needed to do a crisis bake and I didn't feel like vlogging yet so I just baked and now I have a giant apple pie and it was so good so I'm not really unhappy with it but yeah here, here's an apple pie I haven't made apple pie since like at least more than 15 years ago but it turned out pretty good, if I may say so. It's not hard. So if you can get cheap apples and you have an hour, make apple pie. It's great. And my 
my whole flat smelled amazing. I put some extra cinnamon in it, more than the recipe said, and I also put pumpkin pie spice in it because I'm a rebel. I'm gonna close this out and then I'm gonna eat and drink my tea. But I want to thank you for coming on this journey with me and hanging out with me. By the way, I'm less sad today. I was just, it was just isolation getting to me a little bit. I'm okay now. But thank you for hanging out with me. It's been really fun. And I'm still gonna read Elatsue and Holding Tree. And a shout out to my patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourself and join a socialist organization. And drink water, wash your hands. Thank you. Goodbye.